in these historic times when people around the world are echoing the sentiment, Black Lives Matter, I thought I'd celebrate black culture with the only black American owned car company. In a change, this video isn't being monetized, but if you want to make a contribution to the National Society of Black Engineers, there will be a link at the end of the video. This is the Patterson Greenfield story. Charles Patterson was born in 1833 in Virginia. Like many black people at that time, he was born into slavery and his family worked on a plantation. There are reports his family escaped in the 1840s. By the 1860s, Charles was a free man working in Greenfield, Ohio and learned to be a blacksmith, rapidly rising to become a foreman. Soon he'd moved on to making carriages and quickly got known as someone who did high quality work. By 1873, he'd formed a business making carriages with a partner, but after his partner died, he took over the company in its entirety and renamed it C.R. Patterson & Sons in 1893. This was the day of horse-drawn carriages and there was always a strong demand. He was an important pillar in the community, being a trustee of the Greenfield African Methodist Episcopal Church and held several offices in the Cedar Grove Freemasons organization. Charles became ill in 1897, which prompted his son Fred to give up his job teaching history and work for the family business. Charles had been sure to educate his children well. Fred had been the first black child to go to the local high school, thanks in large part to his father's harrying of the school board to let in a black student to the only white high school in town. He went to college and became something of an athlete, being the first black athlete to play American football for Ohio State University. Upon his father's death in 1910, Fred was determined to take his father's business to the next level. The horse-drawn cart was going the way of the dodo and it was natural for the company to focus on the new automobile. Like many car and bicycle companies, they started by repairing automobiles from existing car companies in 1913. It was simple for them to repair the bodies and interiors. These were very similar to buggies and wagons they'd been producing for years. But the internal combustion engine and stronger mechanics were completely new. But soon the workers were learning to repair both electrical and mechanical systems on these newfangled horseless carriages. Once the principles of how a car operated was mastered, the next logical step was to produce their own automobile. In these early days, car companies were starting up all over the world, and as far as Fred Patterson must have seen it, this was maybe the only way his company could stay in business. This was early days for assembly line manufacturing, and it's not impossible to believe that small car companies around the world could survive, as small carriage companies had done for hundreds of years. The Patterson Greenfield automobile was available in 1915. Both Fred and his father knew advertising was critical to their business's success, so the new car was promoted to Ohio customers. The car was offered in several configurations, for example a coupe, a saloon or a roadster capable of 50 miles an hour. The hope was to sell the car to customers who'd previously bought carriages from the company and were looking to try an automobile. The car was pitched as a small but reasonably priced vehicle that could undercut the competition. The car used a 30 horsepower continental four-cylinder engine and featured electric starting which made it an easier car to use rather than manually starting vehicles that some people had problems starting and there was a danger of injury from a flying handle. The build quality was the same as it had been on their carriages. The first Model T Ford was sold in 1908 and sold for $825. That's over $21,000 in today's money. The Patterson Greenfield competed directly with the Model T and was available for only $685, but Ford's relentless push to reduce costs with modern mass manufacturing techniques meant you could buy the same Model T in 1925 for just $260 less than a third of the initial price. Smaller car manufacturers just couldn't compete unless they invested heavily to become as large as Ford, and Fred Patterson's company just didn't have the ability to put that sort of capital behind the company. They were selling a product on price, not a high quality luxury product like a Rolls Royce. 
Estimates put car production between 30 and 150 cars by 1918, but car production halted and the company retreated to its automobile repair business. In the 1920s, the company tried another tack. The company was still an expert at custom building automobile bodies, so they bought in truck and bus chassis from other companies and started adding their own bodies. The company found a niche producing them and the company remained profitable, but the 1929 Wall Street crash put a shock on many businesses, including C.P. Patterson and Sons. The company was now run by Fred Sons, who tried to keep the business going, but by 1939 the company couldn't continue any longer and it had to be closed. However, the Patterson Greenfield remains the only car produced by an African American company. Both Charles and Fred showed a pioneering spirit in the face of adversity that grew an innovative company over 50 years. It now requires a small fortune to start a car company, and very few have tried and succeeded. But in 2020, over a hundred years after the Patterson Greenfield, there still aren't enough minority-owned engineering businesses. The National Society of Black Engineers is a non-profit that works to improve recruitment and retention of black people and other minorities into engineering. It publishes magazines to grow interest from school kids in STEM, supports engineering students at college level, and also minority engineers already in industry. If you're able, there's a link to my Facebook page where you can make a donation. I'll be matching contributions up to a $2,000 limit, so any donation you make could be doubled. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.